Hello everyone, welcome to the 8th Visual 3D tutorial video. This one is on creating reports within the application. After completing the necessary analysis of your data, it is important that you are able to display the information gained. The report is created within the Visual 3D workspace, where all data is stored and models are integrated as well. The entire workspace can be saved and shared, so all underlying analysis can be accessed. Every Visual 3D workspace includes exactly one report, which begins as initially blank and you may add in any number of distinct pages. As stated previously, the entire workspace is itself a kind of electronic report because it contains not only the contents of the reporting page, but also all of the original data and records of the data processing steps. Visual 3D reports are laid out according to a row column structure. Each report page can have a distinct number of rows and columns, and you can specify that certain items can span multiple rows or columns. Items which can, which can be included in reports include graphs, tables, graphical representations, for example, gate analysis metrics such as step length and cycle time, subject and laboratory information, and bitmap images imported from other programs. After creating your report, you may choose to save a report template file, which saves not only the formal structure of the printed report, but actually the entire structure of the workspace aside from the data. Provided you are consistent in the naming of your standing and movement trials, markers, etc., you can reuse such templates for many experiments of the same type. Examples of this application can refer to the same experimental protocol or multiple subjects from the same experiment. To open a report template, we can select the file menu option and select re Open Report Template in the Visual 3D application. This is seen in the following image. This tutorial will follow through a process which creates a simple report template, which can also be downloaded from the link on the software documentation wiki page. Page one of this report will display the temporal distance measures using Visual 3D's built-in calculations. And page two of this report will display a simple 2D graph of sagittal knee kinematics. For more information about all report options offered by Visual 3D, for example, images, text slash metric tables, and subject information, please view the reports overview page, uh, overview wiki page. If you have not already done so, download the CMZ file for this tutorial off of the wiki page and open it on the application. This file contains, number one, predefined joint angles. For more information about defining joint angles, Please see the tutorial on creating compute model based data. Second is gate event labels, such as heel strikes and toe offs. These specifically indicate kinematic events, meaning there is no force data available for that gate cycle. If it was an on slash off label, this indicates kinetic events, meaning force data is available. These events were created using the automatic gate events pipeline command. The third is the tag name walk. As you can see, this has been applied to all of the all of the motion files here, and our uh, calibration file is here uh, stating standing standing static cal 2.c3d. Then we can navigate to the signals and events tab here to visualize the animation of the model based on the movement data and the model that was applied to it. If the animation isn't appearing in the 3D animation viewer which in this case it's not, then we have to check the active uh, file combo box on the toolbar, which is here. So we can click it and it will open a drop down. It should read nwalk001.c3d, which is here, this file. Now we can play around with the VCR controls in order to view the motion capture. To start creating a report, we must switch to the reports tab. All elements should be blank. First, we will be adding a report page for temporal and distance metrics. So we can select temporal and distance metrics from the item to add select a selection menu on the bottom of the screen. So we can select temporal and distance metrics and then click add. This will open the edit temporal distance properties dialog box. Uh, all uh, features of this dialog box can remain the default except we can Select the checkbox beside Use Strict Event Label Sequence Validation. Selecting this option means that the events must occur in a, spec in a specified gate order. A note if you, it, for if your subject is walking on a treadmill, the treadmill speed must be entered in this window here. 
The direction of the treadmill should indicate which direction the subject would have been progressing in the lab if there was no treadmill. So in your case, if uh, your experiment uh, includes a treadmill, then you would have to edit the information in this in this specific tab. The now we can click done and the following chart will appear on page one of the report. Let's say we changed our mind about which metrics we want after the report has already been created. We are still able to go back and edit it. So we can select the temporal distance report created by selecting this and then click edit selected. The same dialog box as before will be prompted to show here and we can select more desired metrics. So let's say we want each of the desired metrics in this list to show on our report. We can select all of them and then click done. As you can see, the updated report has all of the selected metrics and we are able to see them here. Moving on to the next page of our report, we will be displaying a 2D graph. Remaining on the reports tab, we can select the insert page after button. Now we can select number two and then in the item to add drop down, uh, in the item to add drop down menu, we can click it and then select 2D graph and then click add. This will prompt the dialog box to open. This section will create a 2D graph of a sagittal knee kinematics of sagittal knee kinematics being graphed as a percent of the gait cycle from left heel strike to left heel strike. The dialog win the dialog window is separated into four sections as you can see. So it's the graph title and graph properties, x-axis properties, and y-axis properties. We can now begin to fill in information in this dialog box in order to display the 2D graph on our second page. So we will be entering the information shown in the following image. Next, we can add annotations. <clears throat> the annotations option allows you to view annotations on the graph based on events specified in your dynamic trials. First, we select the local annotations button here. Once the annotations editor dialog box opens, we can click add. Then we can uh, fill in the following options. For the annotation style, we can select a vertical line. The color will be purple. The size will be large. The event, event name or numeric value will be selected as LTO or left toe off. And then we can select average event or numeric value. Then select OK. This annotation should now appear in the annotations editor dialog box. Select OK in the annotations editor dialog box. Now we can press OK and the following graph should appear on page two. Now we can move on to formatting the 2D graph. We can select the graph by left clicking on where a box will appear on the desired graph that we've chosen. Then we can right click for the context menu to open, the, open and select format graph here. Now this modified 2D graph dialog box will open. Select by explicit, explicit setting from the Y axis scale dropdown here and then the y min value will be negative 12 and the y max value will be 70. Now, then we can check click the show legend box and also select the modify legend button. In the legend properties dialog box check use tag name and set location to ur and then select OK. Now we can select Apply on the Graph Format dialog box. 
the 2D graph, now if we were to press OK and view the 2D graph, it should now display the tag name walk on the upper right hand corner as we can see and the minimum and maximum values of the y-axis should be set from negative 12 to 70 which can be seen here. Moving on we can edit the text on a specified page. This option is available on newer versions of the Visual 3D application so make sure your version is updated to the latest release. To add text annotations in earlier versions the make underscore text annotation pipeline command must be used. In this case, we will be doing it on the current page. It should be known that the edited text is specific to the page and not to the current graph. We can add balloon text to this page. In the, and so to do this, in the item to add dropdown, we can select balloon text and press add. The edit balloon text item dialog box will appear here. Now we can fill in certain items. So the page will stay at two, the position across will be 22 and the position down will be 77 and then we can uncheck the draw box around text the balloon text identifier will be set to LHS1 and the text to be displayed will, displayed will be LHS then we can press OK we can also create a second balloon text image by following the, the following steps so again, we can <clears throat> uh, select add and then oh, make sure that the page is selected rather than the balloon text that we've just added. And again, we can select add and then we can fill in the following information. So this time the position across will be 89 and the position down will be 77. And again, we can uncheck the draw box around text. We can, the identifier will be LHS2 in this case, and the text to be displayed will be LHS. Now we can press OK. Now the text LHS should now appear at zero and 100% of the X axis, as we can see. When creating reports with multiple pages using the same format, but graphing differently tagged items or using different events, it is possible to use the search and replace function to quickly create new pages. First, we can create a copy of the current page by using the duplicate page button here. Now that it has been duplicated, we can go to the duplicated page. So we can select page number three and then select the search and replace button to open the options. From within this dialog box, we can select the old file tag or old event label and the event or tag to replace it and then click add. This will automatically replace the old event or tag and replace it with a new one. Next, we can move on to saving the report template and having an on-screen report presentation. We can save the report template so that they can be applied to other CMZ files. To save a report template, you can navigate to the File menu drop-down and then select Save Report Template. Now, navigate to your required folder and then we can save this specific template as creating report tutorial underscore template. And this will be saved as an RGT file. Now we can hit save. Alternatively, you can also use the uh, icons on the toolbar to save your template. Now once the report is finalized, we can click the edit report button to exit out of the report editing functionality and it will show the 3D animation viewer instead. Now if we click the VCR controls as you can see there is a line that mat that syncs up with uh, how the model is moving on the actual graph. Thank you for watching this video on creating reports in Visual 3D. There are many other features of creating reports in the application. If you want to plot normal data in the report please view the Plotting Normal Data tutorial. Report templates may also be created using the make underscore line underscore graph pipeline command. An example of how to create a simple report template using a pipeline script can be found on the bottom of the tutorial wiki page. Thank you for watching.